Hi guys, welcome to my affordable watch collection. My name is Aviv and today we are going to take a look at an American micro brand watch, an originally designed and solidly built tool watch, the Bernhardt Binnacle Diver. First, a disclaimer. This watch was sent to me from Bernhardt for free to review and I don't have to give it back. So keep that in mind as you watch this review. However, I was not told what to say and you can, as always, expect my own honest opinion of this watch alongside all the specs and measurements. Now with that out of the way, Bernhardt is a family owned and operated business located in North Carolina, USA. They take pride in their family heritage of industry men and women and in values such as hard and honest work and great customer service. According to many reviews I read and watched online while preparing this review, that statement seems to be backed up in actions. This specific diver's watch is a veteran for the company. It was designed by Philip, son of founder Fred Bernhardt Amos, when he was just 12 years old. Philip is now the vice president of design for the company, and the watch he designed is the company's best seller. It comes in five different colorways, including this black one, and it sells for $269 US dollars. Let's take a quick look at what you can expect to get when you order one of these. You get a nice and useful travel case, padded and branded. Inside there's a little pocket with a two years warranty card, a quick instruction card for the movement, and of course the watch itself, which was well covered with protective plastic as well. I also keep the two and a half links I removed from the watch in here. Okay, let's take a closer look at the watch. Let's first get the measurements so we'll know what we're looking at here. The actual width of the case is 41 millimeters, but the bezel slightly overhangs over it at 42 millimeters. Its thickness is a touch under 14 millimeters. The distance between the lugs is 20 millimeters and the bracelet tapers to 18 at the clasp. Lug tip to lug tip is 50 millimeters, but the protruding male end links bring the overall length of the watch all the way up to 55 and a half millimeters. And after I remove those two and a half links, the watch weighs a hefty 170 grams. It is water resistant to a depth of 200 meters. The dial on this variation of the binnacle is matte black, but there's a glossy finished ring on the edge of the dial with a white mini track printed on it, adding some visual depth to the dial. The indices are all applied, highly polished and filled with loom. This is a no date dial, so all the hour markers are present three and nine large Arabic numerals, very similar to those on a Rolex Explorer 1, and triangle or shark teeth everywhere else. The 12 and 6 triangles are slightly larger than the rest for distinction. Under the 12 o'clock marker, you'll find the brand's name printed in white, Bernhardt Watch Company, and above the 6 o'clock marker, the model's name, Binnacle Diver. We have an interesting set of hands, an arrow hour hand, a sword style minute hand, and a needle seconds hand. The hour and minute hands carry a lot of loom, while the seconds hand is not loomed at all. The hands are highly polished, and there are no other complications other than them on the dial. The loom on the hands, the indices, and the little loomed peep on the bezel is C3 Superluminova, it shines in a bright green light that should last for a few hours. The bezel is made of stainless steel and is very easy to grip and operate. It houses an aluminum dive time bezel insert with a minute track as well as numbered indicators in five minutes increments. And of course, a downwards facing triangle with a small loomed peep applied to its center to mark the 12 o'clock position. It is a 120 clicks unidirectional bezel 
The ratchet in action is crisp and accurate and there's absolutely no freedom or backplay to the bezel. However, it seems to be minorly misaligned with the markings on the dial, just ever so slightly to the right. The binnacle sports a flat piece of scratch-resistant sapphire crystal with no anti-reflective coating. The case is made of 316L stainless steel and its shape resembles the Omega Seamaster case. The lugs have kind of a twisted motion to them and they curve down to confirm nicely to the wrist. It is very finely brushed on all surfaces, providing that cool tool watch aesthetics. The crown at the 3 o'clock position is somewhat protected by those short crown guards. It sports an engraved B for Bernhard and it screws down into place. When you screw it out and twist up, you can hand wind the movement, pull it to the first position and you are met with a ghost position. When you twist the crown, nothing happens and you hear a clicking sound. This is because the movement has a date complication that doesn't get utilized in this watch. When you pull the crown all the way out, you can set the time. Notice how the second hand keeps sweeping. That is because this is a non-hacking movement. Round the back, the watch has a screw-down exhibition case back with a black printed shark on the mineral glass. A nod to the history of this watch, which used to be called the Sea Shark before it was renamed to Binnacle Diver, is printed below the shark. Bernhardt Watch Company is proudly engraved on the stainless steel ring surrounding the glass. Through the glass and behind the shark, we get a glimpse at the veteran Miyota 8215, a Japanese automatic movement first introduced to the world in 1977. It has 21 joules and it beats at 21,600 beats per hour. That makes the second hand tick six times each second and creates that illusion of a sweeping motion of the second hand. As we saw, you can wind it by hand, but it will not hack. It will also wind itself as the rotor spins when you move your wrist. It winds unidirectionally as the rotor spins clockwise in that very distinctive Mayota fidget spinner fashion. The stated accuracy coming out of the Miyota factory is minus 20 to plus 40 seconds per day, but in reality it is much more accurate than that. The Binnacle Diver comes on a robust, fully brushed stainless steel bracelet. It is constructed of solid links and solid end links, pretty thick ones I have to say. They are held together with screws rather than pins which makes it very easy to adjust the bracelet. There are also two half links, one on each side of the clasp, two shorter links that will help you get the perfect fit for your wrist. The middle links of the end links protrude quite a bit, making the watch wear larger than its actual size. The clasp has Bernhardt Watch Company engraved on top and the security latch, it closes with friction only, there are no pushers, but it does feel very secure. It has four holes for micro-adjusting the bracelet, and it is machined or milled. And here it is on my 7-inch wrist. You can see that on my wrist the watch wears great, and the protrusion doesn't make it overhang off of my wrist. But if you have smaller wrists than mine, that might be an issue to consider. The watch and the bracelet both wear very comfortably and both feel very hefty and robust. You get a very reassuring feeling when you strap this watch on. It feels like a really well-made tool watch, tough enough that you can hammer nails with it. You probably shouldn't though. It is pretty chunky, but it doesn't wear as large as I thought it would. I don't really know why. Legibility is great. You can't ask for a better contrast than white hands against a black background. A black dial diver also means that this watch is going to be a strap monster, 
and it will look awesome on almost every strap you'll try it on. Now let's take a look at some pros and cons of the binnacle diver, starting with the cons. It is a great watch, but it is not without its flaws. I can point at the slightly misaligned bezel as one. It is very minor and it doesn't bother me personally, but I know some people's OCD might get triggered by this and for them this might even be a deal breaker. Second thing are those protruding middle links of the end links. Again, it is not an issue for me with my 7 inch wrist, but for smaller wrists it might not be the best fit. At 50 millimeters, it is already a lengthy watch and these do add quite a bit on top of it. Now, about the movement, I'm in a bit of a dilemma. While there's nothing actually wrong with the Miyota 8215, it is a very old movement, almost 45 years old. It is considered to be a very reliable entry-level automatic movement though, which might explain why Bernhardt decided to go with it, but I would love to see a more modern movement here. Moving on to the pros, the first word that comes to mind when looking to describe this watch is solid. It feels like a solid tool watch, really tough and robust. You get a full stainless steel construction of the case and bracelet with a flawless brushed finish on both. The bracelet is excellent and fully adjustable with its two half links and four micro adjustment holes. You get a sapphire crystal that will stay scratch free. You get 200 meters of water resistance with screw down crown and case back. You get an original design that draws inspiration from two iconic watches. And on top of it all, you get to support a family owned business and enjoy a great and personal customer service from people who actually care about you being satisfied with the product you bought from them. In the description of this video, you will find a link to Bernhardt's website where you can check their lineup for yourselves. If you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my affordable watch collection and hit the notification bell for more affordable watches related content. You can also follow me on Instagram where you can get to know me and my collection a little bit better, get all the news about the channel and connect with me on a personal level. If you enjoyed this video, you might enjoy one of these two as well. I want to thank Bernhardt Watch Company for sending this watch in for review. And thank you all very much for watching. And I will see you next time.